chapter 4. We're going to get in the scripture here for a few minutes this evening. 1 Timothy chapter number 4. We'll look at a verses to a scripture here. I need everyone to listen. If you are a part of Shining Light Baptist Church, you come here regular, whether you're a member or not, I want you to listen carefully tonight to the scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. This scripture has been used all kinds of ways, but I want to use it in a, in a way that I believe it helps us tonight. Now the Spirit, capital S, that would be the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I contend to you tonight that we are in that time. I've been doing a lot of study and listening last few weeks on the emerging church. If you, don't, if you haven't studied that or heard it, look at the emergence of the, the new church. Emerging is like, like when it turns warm weather and the water falls out there and these plants start coming up out of the ground. Emerging, emerging. They say there's a new church emerging in the world. And they say every 500 years, we got to have something new. The last 500 was the Reformation. Began by Martin Luther and them preachers. And they said 500 years of Protestantism is done and we're now at the dawning of a new age for churches. You're going to be shocked when I show you and tell you what the leaders of the emerging church believe. And that's where all of this mega church stuff is leading and going. Um, uh, it, it's a scary thought. It's scary. And I'm going to preach on that tonight. I'm going to nail down what we ought to be doing. Verse 2 said they'd be speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. That's a Catholic doctrine, forbidding priests to get married, nuns to get married. That's a doctrine of devils. Amen? That's what it said. That's a doctrine of devils. When the Catholic Church forbids priests and nuns to get married, that's not Holy Mother Church. That's ungodly demonic doctrines, what that is. Amen? Come on, y'all, you Bible believers or, or religion worshipers. And to abstain from meats, that means the vegetarian movement is of the devil. Sure is. It sure is. That's to make religious people feel good about their self, having some kind of beliefs. When God created creatures to be received, nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, the next verse. Uh, it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. The Bible said they commit and be stained from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. I'm glad I believe and know the truth. Amen. And I get to be a good preacher tonight. I put the brethren in remembrance of these things. I'm a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. It seems like the church today, when I say the church, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about the church in general around the world, is being moved and pushed and watered down and, and changed everywhere we look. <coughs> Excuse me. You can go to the average Christian bookstore and you will find books about the holy liturgy and Catholic books that you would never find in what they call a Protestant bookstore years ago. You will not find books by Gail Ripplinger or William Grady that are mild supporters of the King James Bible. Their books are chick tracks are not allowed. And who's controlling the big chain Christian bookstores. It's not Bible believers, and we're going to get into that a little bit more when, when we study the emerging church. What I'd like to do tonight is talk to Shining Light Baptist Church a little bit, and I want you to give me your attention. It won't take long if you'll listen, and I want to preach on some things the church cannot afford to lose. Some things our church cannot ladies and gentlemen, afford to lose. The church today is supposedly rich and increased with goods, having need of nothing. 
More money than ever. More methods than ever. More means than ever. More talent than ever. More, they own radio stations. They own, they own TV stations and broadcast. Nothing wrong with all of this, but it seems like the church has slipped away from where the Lord would have it to be. There's some things we can do without. We can do without all of our fussing and our bickering. We can do without all of our dead, dry, dull, uh, disgraceful services. We can, do, deal, we can do without that dead theology that they discuss in a lot of places. You know, there's a lot of churches that are straight as a gun barrel doctrinally and as empty as one spiritually. And that's a sad thing. Uh, some of the deadest meetings I've ever been in in my life were straight Bible-believing meetings where they had everything Thing right and nothing in their heart. And, and uh, uh, we can do without some of that stuff. But I want to say tonight, there's some things that we cannot afford to do without. I'll name these off quickly this evening and you'll listen and give me your attention, please. Number one, we cannot afford to do without our Christ-centered services. And that is the one we worship. The one we worship. We cannot afford to do that. When we meet together, it's like the old song says, Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. In this emerging church business, you know what they're turning church into? They don't want pews. They want couches and chairs. And they don't want somebody pre. They want to sit around and, and talk. They say, we want dialect. Let's discuss things like that. They want somebody up preaching to them like they've been for 2,000 years and ordained by God in the Bible. Everybody needs preaching to. I need preaching to. You need preaching to. And I'm going to tell you, that crowd sure needs preaching to. There ain't nobody in here that don't need the devil preached out of them a couple of times a week. Say amen. Punch him, wives. You know he does. And, and you, know, you know she does. We all do. And brother, we need that. We cannot afford to do without it. What do we have in our Christ-centered churches, uh, services? We have three things in our services. We have prayer, we have praise, and we have preaching. You've got to have them three things. Without them three things, a church is not what a church ought to be. I'm telling you, listen, brother, we, we may not be uh, famous and world-renowned and looked upon good in the eyes of the world, but I want every mama in here to know that when they come to Shining Light Baptist Church, we're going to have praying, we're going to have praising, and we're going to have preaching. That's what church is. Praying, praising, and preaching. There's going to be a time when we get on this altar and pray. And a lot of churches don't even do that no more. A little bit too highfalutin and big shoddy uh, to get into an altar and pray. I'm telling you, brother, in the Bible, they got down with their faces to the ground. They got down like this. We ain't no better than they was. They raised their hands up to heaven. They ain't nobody in here too good to get down on your face and raise your hands up and pray to God. They had praying and then they had praising. In the Bible, they praised the Lord. They lifted up their hands. They said amen and the Bible said they shouted and you could hear the shout a long way off. I'm telling you tonight, you go to the average church, it is absolutely like a blessed funeral in there every Sunday morning and Sunday night, something's wrong. They go to the ball game scream like a Comanche Indian. I mean, brother, like they just won the lottery and come to church and sit just like they're about to die I'm just sucked on lemons all the way under the house of God and prune juice now I'm telling you we ought to praise there ought to be some praise there ought to be some praise are you saved from hell are you saved from hell people I mean we're saved from hell ain't we well brother we ought to just praise him glory to God once in a while and say woo good to be saved amen Amen. Not just when we feel good. Not just when we got a famous group up singing. I like good singing too. But sometimes it ought to just start bubbling down deep in your soul. And you start thinking, glory to God, my name is there. My name is in the book of life. I'm glad, glory to God. Listen, in 2017, it's still real. It's still good. God's still on his throne. Heaven's still sweet. Hell's still hot. We're not 
going to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We can't afford to do without that. I like to go to church where there's a little bit of praising once in a while. Now, you know what they do? They accuse the old says that's just emotion. That's just, well, let me ask you something, uh, Mr. Genius. Why do you think God gave us our emotions? God gave us emotions. And everything God gave us, it's to praise Him with. Now, if all you got is emotion, you ain't got nothing. But, brother, if your faith is real and your heart is right and it bubbles over and a smile comes on your face, Brother, we praise the Lord. We can't afford to lose that. I've even heard people say, oh, you really believe that's real when they're doing that? Oh, so-and-so getting up there shouting. Well, we don't worry about your sleeping if it's real. You don't worry about nothing else being real. Amen. Uh, you're, was he under conviction or something? Does it bother you? Of course there's a few fakes every now and then. Of course there's a few that put on every now and then. But Lord, have mercy. Uh, don't let that bother you. Go ahead and praise God anyhow. We can't afford to do without our Christ-centered services. Amen. Lord, I like preaching. I like preaching. I like, I like that story said one time years ago, little old bitty country church up on top of the hill, and it was dead in 4 o'clock. Nobody ever went to it. And one day, a fire broke out out there and caught that little church on fire. And that little old building was a burning down, and they said everybody in town grabbed them a bucket of water, and they were running up that hill to throw that water on that fire. And it just so happened that the church deacon was running right beside the town atheist. I mean, right beside him. Here was the atheist, here was the deacon running up that hill to throw the water, to put a fire out. And, and, the, uh, and the deacon looked at the atheist and said, first time I've ever seen you run to the church. And, and the atheist said, first time I've ever seen church on fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, they might run to it if a church would get on fire. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm going to talk out of my heart to Shining Light Baptist Church tonight. Listen, we ain't perfect. I ain't, but listen, well, don't you think we can get on fire? Didn't the youth really do something for you? It did me, brother. I'm telling you, rekindle the fire in my soul. We need to get on fire. We need to get on fire. People will run to the house of God when the fire's burning. Number two, number two. We cannot afford to lose our convictions. That's what we believe. And I ain't talking about nitpicky stuff. I'm talking about basic convictions. Now, a conviction is something that you believe down in the core of your soul. A lot of times people say, well, I have conviction about this and I won't write with a blue pen. Or, you know, that's not a conviction. A conviction is something that you die for. Other stuff is preference. I have a lot of preferences, but when it comes right down to it, I wouldn't die for a preference. We ought to be willing to die for a conviction. There are three basic convictions that a church ought to have tonight, and you know what they are. I just want to remind you tonight. Number one's the book. Number two's the blood. And number three is the blessed hope. Now, brother, we ought to have some convictions about that. I mean, there's no wiggle room on them three things right there. There's no debate. There's no something like, well, maybe Christ came metaphorically. When the, no, 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 no. There's no debate like, well, you know what they're saying now? This emerging church, they're saying that other religions, religious books have truth to offer to, and the Bible has truth. And I got a quote that I'm going to show you from one of the leaders of the emerging church who said this. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, Jesus, Muhammad, Abraham and Moses all got revelations from God. And he said, uh, they said, uh, 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 they all got their truth from God and we can glean a little bit from each of those revelations. They put Jesus Christ in the same category as Muhammad, Abraham, Moses, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And one of them even said, I'm going to show it to you. I'm, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to show it to you. You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe what some of the people that you admire and some of you people listen to and some of the books you, you're going to be shocked at what they really believe. 
You say, well, Brother Danny, you're making me nervous. But not, not if you believe the truth, it won't. If you'll stick with that book, it won't. If you'll stick with this conviction, it won't. You know what they said? They said, whether or not Jesus was really born of a virgin is not of, of, uh, it's not something to fight about. And one of the leaders, he said this. He said, if I found out that Jesus' real father was a man named Larry, just out of the clear blue, a man named Larry, it would not affect my faith one bit. That's what he said. He's a leader of the church in America and the world. And he said, if we found out that Jesus' real father was a man named Larry, our faith would remain the same. Listen, brother, if we found out Jesus Christ's daddy was a man named Larry, we'd shut them doors back there. We'd throw the Bible down and never pick it up again. Our faith is vain. Your hope is vain. We are yet in our sins. It is not debatable. Christ died, was buried. He rose again. Virgin born, son of God. Joseph was not his daddy. Larry was not his daddy. God was his father. And it's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. I'm telling you people, there ain't nothing to argue about. We don't even talk, no fussing, no fighting. Done. It is done, brother. That's it. The book, the blood, and the blessed hope. The only thing that stands between us and hell is the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. You don't put Jesus Christ on the level as them other people. And you don't put Muhammad in the same list as Abraham and Moses, neither. He's a completely different demon-possessed leader of a wicked religion. You know what they say? They say that we should all get together and find where all religions agree. They don't believe in hell. They believe it's inconsistent with the teachings of Jesus himself. And they believe that if God, here's what they say. They're saying, I'm going to show you this too. They said, if God, one man said, he said, uh, he said, if my wife done something against me, he said, I don't say I forgive you and then go kick the dog. He said, I don't punish the dog. He said, if God punished Jesus for our sins, he's guilty of divine child abuse. That's what he said. He said, if God's wrath on Christ on the cross was to punish him for our sin, God is a bad parent and guilty of child abuse. You see how twisted and perverted their minds have become. He said that verse that said Jesus will come in flaming fire, taking vengeance on the Antichrist. He said he's nothing but a jihadist if that's the way he's going to do. But I'm telling you tonight, we cannot lose our convictions. It's what the old preachers preach, right? Yes, sir. It sure is. Number three, quickly tonight, are you listening? We cannot afford to lose our character. That's what we are. That's what we are. We cannot afford to lose our character. Compromise is always wrong when it means sacrificing a principle. If you and your wife or you and your kids or, or somebody at work, you can compromise on things to get along and have peace as long as you're not compromising a scripture or a principle of right and wrong. If it comes to right and wrong, we can't. We'll fight. If we have to fight. We'll just fight. But if, we, if there's something that's not scriptural, I give in a little bit, you give in a little bit, we all work together and get along. But compromise is always wrong when we have to do against the Bible in order to do it. And, you, and I know y'all know that. I'm just reminding you of it. Our character, we are living epistles. Amen? Be big enough to admit it when you're wrong. Be big enough to repent, even in front of your kids, when you've done something wrong. Be a light to God sinners. Uh, be a, be a, a witness to the, for the Lord. Have plenty of love. Uh, you know how the world, Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you love one another. We treat one another right. We do each other right in business deals. If you're in a business deal with somebody at the church, make sure you pay them if you owe them money. Make sure you don't try to say, oh, well, they go to church with me, so I don't have to pay them. 
I, listen, it's, it's wrong. You treat each other right. We keep a good character and we honor God and with the Lord our testimony. We cannot afford to lose our character. Number four, we cannot afford to lose our contract. What we promise. I said we can't afford to lose our character. What we are. I said we can't afford to lose our convictions. What we believe. Now I'm saying we can't afford to lose our contract. What we promise. We promise God three times, three things. If you're a member of this church, now if you're not a member, you ought to be. I, you ought to, you, excuse me, you ought to join, become a part of it, honor God, and be a part of our church. And if you're not a member of our church, that's what you do. But if you are a member of a church, I remember back when I first got saved, when you joined the church, it meant something. Nowadays, people join church and don't ever come back. One or two. I know people come real good till they join, then they quit. I never have understood that. When I got saved, when you joined the church, it meant I'm a part of this. Where y'all go, I go. Your people's my people. Your God's my God. We're a family. We're brothers and sisters. We work together. Now, we may not always agree on every little thing, but we're a family. We're, we're an army. We're a bunch of soldiers. So there's three things you commit. When you join a church, you give three things. I've done said a bunch of these. Here's, one, here's what you give when you join a church. You give your time, you give your talent, and you give your tithe. All God's people say it. Amen. You give your time, you give your talent, and you give your time. Ladies and gentlemen, you give your time. Some are too busy, got so many other things going. Devote time to the Lord's work. We ought to give some time to the Lord's work. We have, we have services. That's why we have Sunday school. Well, every once in a while, every once in a while, somebody will come up and they'll say, uh, uh, Brother Danny, uh, uh, we, we need to have a Bible study. Why? Let's have a Bible study. I say, yeah, we have one every week on Wednesday night. You don't come. A good one. See how people think, uh, Brother Danny, uh, I think we need to have uh, uh, this. I think we need to have, uh, when do you count? We counsel from the pulpit, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. If you'll be here every service, every problem you've got will be covered right here in this pulpit. Sometimes we go one-on-one -on -one counseling. I do that. I'm not against that. I'm all for it. But if you'll put your time and you'll be faithful to church and you'll honor God, I appreciate you parents that get your kids in here in Sunday school and may, there's something wrong with kids that just think they go to school if they go to school they go into second grade if they go to the third grade they go to the fourth grade and they go to church and they're five years old and come in here and sit in the adult class something wrong with that that means you think school is more important than your church say amen right there you say well I just don't know about them Sunday school teachers yeah you trust them public school teachers they something weird. You're listening to demons, buddy, is what's wrong with you, sister. I'm telling you tonight, we promise our time, our time. There ain't a person in here who does not need Sunday school and preaching and Wednesday night and Sunday night. Not a one of us. God help most of us if we need double what we're getting. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know what I think? I think people just look for an excuse to miss. Well, so my old boy gets to stay out again today. All right, listen, there's something wrong with your attitude. I told you about that woman I seen in Walmart the other night, and uh, 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 a man, woman over there in that Walmart over there. I told you about him, and I run into this guy. I said, hey, man, I ain't seen you in a long time, and I say this to everybody. I say, you been going to church regular? And when I said that, that woman looked at me, and she said, I don't have to go to church. I don't, my God is in my heart. My God, I, oh Lord, did she wax spiritual. My God is in my heart. And I, and I said, lady, I don't go to church because I have to. I go to church because I want to. And I'm going to tell you something, people. This breaks my heart. I should not ever have to get up here and fuss at y'all to come to church. Don't, there's something wrong if you don't want to come. Either we got a sorry church and a sorry preacher, or your heart ain't right. And maybe both. I ain't much, but I'll tell you one thing. I do pray and I do study and I, and I try to give you something from this book every Sunday. 
And I'm telling you, if you can't be faithful to church, get your heart right, or find you one you can be faithful to. And I don't mean that. You know what I mean. I don't mean that like I want you to. I'm saying something wrong if you don't want to go to church. If you don't want to go to church. I know stuff happens. I know we've got to work. I know we have problems. I understand that. I get it all. I ain't judging nobody. I'm just saying, when I got saved, I wanted to go to church. I wanted to go. My heart, when I wasn't there, my heart was there. I thought, I'm going to miss something. I'm going to miss something. I want to be there. Listen, we promise our time. We promise our talent. Sitting back there and you can sing real good and won't even get up and sing in choir. Or you can witness. I asked for bus drivers. I had one man right there said, I'll try to get my bus license. I don't know what's wrong with the rest of y'all guys. You either don't care or you just don't want to. I, I don't, I mean, I don't mean to be mean. What would you do if you was the preacher? What would you do if you couldn't, you, I mean, blah, if you preach till you get mad. If I don't, nobody will do anything. I'm telling you, we promise our time and our talent. Everybody say amen right there. You know it's the truth. I mean, I ain't trying to be mean. You know I'm telling you the truth. And then we promise our tithe. Amen. You say, Brother Danny, I just can't afford to tithe. And then that's why, too, right there. Listen, you honor God and do right. He'll bless you. He'll bless you. I guarantee you one thing. Every time every time I give a little something extra, slip a little here, slip a little there. I, every time I honor God, it seems like the Lord blesses me every time. I mean, we ain't rich. I mean, who want, I don't care about being rich. I don't want to be rich. I want to be, as long as I got my bills paid and I'm, I'm, I can eat, you know, Lord, I can eat just as good as Donald. Donald Trump. I mean, I'd just soon have a big hamburger as lamb. Well, what they eat up there in Trump Towers, who wants a lamb? I'm telling you what, brother, listen, God's been good to us. God's been good to us. Well, I give our tithe, our talent, and our tithe. Our tithe. Not only that, number five, we can't afford to lose our compassion. What we feel. What we feel. Did you know people can tell if you really care about them? We ought to love the Lord, we ought to love the lost, and we ought to love the church, we ought to love the lost. So, do you love your neighbor? So when, when, you, when you pull up on the interstate and there's a man there begging for money, do you look at him in disdain and say, God, oh, sorry, bum, I ought to go get him a job. Or does some, my, your heart ought to go out to him and say, that could be my brother, that could be my daddy, that could be me. And it might be us before it's over with. Sure, I know they got themselves in a mess. I went to see a girl in the hospital, me and Kelly in Asheville Hospital the other day, and she's got herself in a mess. But my heart still broke for her. I'm glad Jesus didn't look at the woman at the well and say, look at the mess you got yourself into. He had compassion on her. Amen. You better thank God he did. You better, you better hope God don't treat you like y'all treat other people, some of you. You better hope the Lord ain't as hard on you as you are on others. You better hope God don't measure to you how you look down and treat other people. By the grace of God, it could be you if it wasn't for the grace of God. You could be in a crack house. You could be out there putting meth in your body and putting needles in your vein. I could. My girls could. You better watch it. Have compassion on people. The worst thing you can do is get self-righteous and look down your eyes, your long nose at people and say, I can't believe him. Sorry, low-down sinner. You better watch it, people. You better have compassion on the lost. We, don't, we can't afford to lose our compassion. And number six, we can't afford to lose our contact, what we share with others. We need to witness. Amen? We need to witness. I know the world's crazy. I know they are. I know they deserve what they're going to get. I know that. We deserve it too, though. Uh, something about this girl the other day, they said how crazy. They said, them Hollywood celebrities will not go out on stage two nights in a row with the same dress on. All them Kardashians won't wear the same dress twice, but they'll wear the same tattoo 40 years. Ain't that something? What nuts? How come they don't have a new tattoo every day? But if they get a flag on there in 20 years, that flag will be a-waving. 
be, we have to iron them things. But you better listen to our contacts, our bus workers. Let me challenge all bus workers here tonight, every bus worker, every bus driver. Listen, we cannot. God gave us them buses. There is no doubt in my mind. Hey, a man down there last, last night, he said, now, how many buses y'all run? I said, five. He blew his mind. He said, I can't believe it. He said, I cannot believe y'all do that. Ever. I said, we do. It's hard. The devil fights it. Uh, something's always going wrong. But I'm telling you, I believe in the bus ministry. I believe in the bus ministry. I believe God honors people who work in the bus ministry. I believe God honors people who work on buses, give to buses, hug a bus ne kid's neck, work in the junior church, be good to them, sing with them, play with them. Pray with them. Cut up with them. I believe God loves them little boys and girls. They're out here in these crack houses all over Morgan and tonight. You know that all over Burke County, there's kids being abused and Catawba and McDowell and Lincoln County and, and, uh, and uh, over here in Caldwell, there's kids being abused everywhere right now. And there's some of them little boys and girls looking for somebody to come and knock on their door and say, I know somebody that loves you. I know somebody that cares about you. Come with me to the Father's house and tell them the greatest story ever told and see God work in their life. Lord of God, run them buses, y'all. Run them buses. Run them buses. Fill them full. Let's go Saturday. Knock on some doors. Fill them buses up. Don't give up. Don't quit. That's our contact. Can't afford to lose that. Can't afford to lose that. You say, you still believe in that bus ministry after I'm all, yep, since 1980 I've been in the bus ministry. And I still, I can't stand the thoughts of just saying, ah, cut it out, sell them, just whoever wants to come to church, come, we'll have more money, we'll be able to do this, without, I can't stand that attitude, I can't stand that. I think somebody's out there, look at them, there's some of them sitting in here tonight. Because somebody knocked on their door and brought a bus and brought them to church. People, it still works. It still works. Glory to God, it still works. Let's fill them buses full. Lastly, I'm through. We can't afford to lose our charter. What would follow? Now, there's three things here, too, for a little outline. Our charter is the Savior, the Scripture, and the Spirit. The Savior. The Scripture, we stick to the book. And the Spirit, we pray that God... Well, you, know, you know preaching is supernatural. You understand preaching is supernatural. I'm not nothing special, I'm just a man. But when a man gets plugged in just right and preaching that book, there's something supernatural going on in the church. And he starts, the Spirit of God starts talking to hearts. I've been in churches many, many times. The man of God get up and start preaching, and the first thing you know, you forget anybody else is there but you. And the Spirit of God's talking to your heart. We can't afford to lose that. That's some things the church cannot afford to lose. I'm going to ask y'all tonight do you want to recommit yourself to Shining Light Baptist Church? You say, well, preacher, I was just about to tell you I'm about ready to back off a little bit. It's getting pretty weather, and everybody's jerking, they're putting on their short shorts and going wild, and I'm just, i tell you the truth, I was talking about, listen, it, it ain't no time to be backing up, y'all. It's time to buckle down, get on fire for God, and do what we're supposed to do. Let's stand, let's stand by our heads for prayer tonight. Every head bowed.